And what about this alien UFO thing, really? There's a lot of cool, smart people working on this stuff, and I'm talking to them. Let's take the time to really explore bigger questions. I'm Ron James, and this is another edition of Bigger Questions. I'm here with Laura Eisenhower. Now, those who travel in the ET and the metaphysical fields all are very familiar with her work. Laura has gained a huge audience telling her very interesting stories and also bringing us enlightenment about some of the more esoteric belief systems that people are exploring. Laura, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Tell us a little bit about where you came from and the experiences that you've had that have brought you to the point you are today. My great grandfather uh, was President Eisenhower, and so being in this, you know, family uh, has always been just a big catalyst to um, just awakening my divine purpose. I guess you could say, you know, because you ask questions like, okay, well, what, what am I doing in this family, and and what's what's the deeper connection here? Because um, I don't feel like a political person, and and I do feel uh, a very. I mean, I've always felt a very strong mission, and so. It first started uh, when I was a child, uh, my awareness of my mission, um, you know, the age of five, six, seven, uh, I, was, I was tapping into the collective. Uh, I was, I, I'm very empathic and, you know, I, I was just feeling into everything and um, I had a lot of attention on, you know, the masculine and feminine and, and the Christ Sophia, you know, type energies. And I wasn't like naming those things, but I was sensitive to, um, the programmings, you know, and, and, and just always asking questions uh, that, that I, I would, you know, begin to answer through um, this deeper soul journey that um, I've been on that relates to the underworld and alchemy and, you know, going through huge transformations in order to peel away uh, ancestral patterns, programmings, and social and societal and cultural uh, conditionings that, you know, kind of put us in a place that isn't really authentic to who we really are. Um, you know, where one can see the chakras that a person's operating from and not, you know, really, you know, being in the fullness of, 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 of truth. And so being raised in this family and uh, starting to comprehend multidimensional reality and things like extraterrestrials and seeing rumors connected to Eisenhower and visitations with extraterrestrials, um, I began to awaken aspects of, you know, this journey connected to how mythologies and these deeper, you know, blueprints, um, you know, the sacred union of the masculine and feminine, how that's actually been targeted. And, and so the deeper journey for me was always about offsetting some of the things that we see on the world stage and digging real deep into what are the origins of that? Where does that come from? Um, and so I've done a lot of research in galactic history. Um, I've lived a, a path that has felt more mythological than normal um, to get, you know, to, to this deeper aspect of, 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 you know, myself and seeing that, you know, on a collective level that we, we, we need to be willing to do that. And we need to be willing to peel away all these different things so that we can get to the heart and core of um, what our true potential is, so that we can activate our DNA, so that we can expand into our higher chakras and integrate it into our physical experience. And, uh, and so, yeah, um, how I've gotten to where I am today is just really observing um, and going through some intense processes and connecting dots so that um, we can see how everything you know, connects instead of be so compartmentalized, which is um, a part of why we put spirituality over here and science over here and, um, and why uh, you know, belief systems you know, are, are, are more showing us our fragmented nature instead of something like unity consciousness and, and living a true expression of being a spiritual being instead of uh, you know, these concepts or belief systems or uh, behaviors that you know, don't seem to be in alignment. So you were talking about your connection with Eisenhower, the president, and there is a lot of legendary mythos about him being very instrumental in what we now have today as a truth embargo and in our very beginnings 
with our interaction with ET species. There's a story that he met with them. There's a story that things were negotiated through his presidency. Now, obviously you weren't there, so you, you can't say for sure, but what is your intuitive hit about his impact on that specific issue? Well, I mean, we have to understand that the Second World War wasn't really one. We were dealing with things like Project Paperclip. We were dealing with, you know, Admiral Byrd in 1947 uh, going to uh, Nazi bases um, in Antarctica and being defeated. So, I mean, all these things were going on underneath. Uh, I mean, it, it's like this, this whole other reality is going on that we don't hear about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of a sudden he's voted into, you know, presidency and, you know, this facade of, you know, winning the war, um, you know, begins to just take us further and further away from, you know, the extraterrestrial uh, concept um, and, and what that really means and what it was, you know, what is it really about? What is the interaction? And, and, um, and so I would say that he was instrumental in warning us about the military industrial complex right. and his integrity. And I think, you know, the imprint that he left, um, you know, has allowed us to look back and open that door up and, and, and you know, ask these questions that weren't asked back then. Um, but my intuitive hit is that, and this is what I've gained from, you know, the work of Corey Good and other whistleblowers that have been connected to the secret space programs, is that the Nordics were connected to the Germans. And, um, and it wasn't this whole, oh, you know, he made a deal with the wrong guys. It was like there needed to be um, so much, you know, discernment and clarity about the larger picture that how can you possibly do that um, in, in those times? I mean, mm -hmm. this is what we're trying to sort out now. Sure. Is, is these timelines and, and the deeper history connected to secret societies, connected to, um, you know, the, the, these, these deeper, you know, ET agendas that have been around for thousands of years. And so when it presents itself to a world government or to these power structures, um, you know, there's, there's been pieces put into place specifically on purpose in order to create this outer facade, which we read in our history books, that have nothing to do with the true history of what actually is going on. And so, um, by the time like this other meeting happened, they considered it more of a surrender because they couldn't really do much. Uh, in 1953 is when the UFOs uh, were flown over uh, the White House and that's when they made negotiations with the Nazis um, because they didn't ha have a choice. And so now we see the infiltration, we see it um, in the political system. We might not realize that there's a massive Nazi presence, but there is. And, uh, and that you know is via uh, Project Paperclip and um, and so I would say he was instrumental in, in giving us a warning, but his hands were tied and there was not a whole lot that he could do in order to you know, keep this negative uh, ET agenda from continuing to grow like a cancer. And so when we look at it, you know, we can be in fear of it or we can feel like, oh, we've been invaded or you know, what is she talking about here? It's really an inside job. You know, it's really about uh, unplugging and, and purifying our negative ego and, and, and seeing what the traps are and understanding the nature of the war. The war is really within. You know, our free will choices can get us out of the war, but we have to be willing to claim an inner victory and, and, and not feed the very thing that um, has infiltrated. And, uh, you know, healing holistically and coming into balance and all these things that um, are so important for us right now in order to be more awakened individuals um, will offset all of this, you know? And this is where we really have to begin to merge the masculine and feminine and science and spirituality and, uh, and recognize that there's so much at stake if we don't take it upon ourselves to awaken to a, a purpose that we all hold. We can't put it on our leaders. We can't wait for something to come and save us. Uh, and that's where we keep chasing our tail and not getting anywhere. We, we each have to stand up and do something um, to make an impact. And, uh, and, and, and it can be just simply, you know, deciding to, um, you know, live a path of integrity and not serve, um, you know, the things that we've been taught to uh, align with and, um, you know, push the envelope and rebel a little bit, but, you know, return to your center as well and, uh, and, and be the script writer. We're at a time where an awakening of consciousness is pretty much universally agreed upon, that humanity is going through a conscious evolution and a conscious revolution. But at the same time, the obstacles and the adversaries are larger than life as well. Um, I've heard you talk, and you talked also about the invisible forces that are behind things that are happening in human affairs and all of their different agendas, uh, light and dark. For the person that's not really up to speed on those kinds of topics, can you bring us, can you give us a little bit of Reader's Digest version of how? 
the visible outcome of humanity is something that is of interest to a lot of different types of consciousnesses that we don't understand. Well, the human race has been yeah, very, I mean, we, we have a very interesting history. I mean, we used to be in a different dimensional experience, you know, uh, dimensions four, five, and six. Uh, the higher Earth energy of Tara uh, is where Tiamat, the planet, exploded, which became, you know, the asteroid belt. And there was refugees that came here uh, from that exploded planet. Um, we're dealing with root races like Atlantis and Lemuria and Hyperborea and Polaris and, um, and you know, different cataclysms and, and uh, holocausts, you know, took place that drove a lot of civilizations underground. And uh, they've been preserving... Uh, their connection to these uh, guardian races that have very advanced technologies and they've been sort of hiding away from the human race because the human race and the seedings of the human race ended up getting tinkered with and ended up almost downloading this, this aggression that these uh, darker beings um, you know, brought. And if we look at, well, how, how did that happen? I mean, we're in a free will universe and so when there was more differentiation of the masculine and feminine, um, and the negative ego emerged, it almost like created this opening for these warring races to come in. And we can see that in our own lives. If we're in our negative ego and we're being controlling or we're being um, in a lower place, you know, you can almost feel like a dark energy come in and it's uncomfortable and it's constricting unless you're the person that's doing it. You know, then there's some sort of addiction or need or thing that needs to be fulfilled that, you know, ends up almost being like an energy vampire. Like, you know, what, what can I exploit? What can I take? How can I use and abuse in order to get what I want, and that's a service to self energy. Um, it's, it's just greedy, and so when we look at the larger picture, it's like, you know, we, we think about extraterrestrials, we make it so far away from us, and so alien to us, when in actual fact, we're multidimensional beings that on every level of our consciousness, there's something that relates to it. So our higher consciousness will connect to angels and fairies and, um, you know, higher benevolent races. Um, our lower ego nature will connect with these um, warring uh, you know, species. And when we look at, you know, I mean, we, we hold about 22 uh, different strains of extraterrestrial genetics. Um, and, and, and we can perceive, you know, multi-dimensions that are beyond here. And so uh, if somebody has an entity attachment, it's because they haven't resolved something or healed something. And so the humanity hasn't resolved or healed. It's fragmented. There's, you know, been this plan to conquer and divide in order for these darker energies to be able to feed on fear, separation, trauma, and uh, and so it's no different than what we experience in our physical bodies. You know, if we're dealing with a parasite or we're dealing with a psychic attack or we're dealing with um, a negative, you know, influence. And so when we come into unity consciousness, when we begin to bring balance back, and we don't rely so much on the history books, but we look at you know the deeper layers of the dark technologies that have been you know put in place to you know kind of make all this really difficult. Um, there's going to be nothing for it to be able to feed on, and we're going to start to expand into something that attracts the benevolent forces and the beings that connect with our higher self that are just waiting in the wings, you know. And they've been intervening because the dark energies intervened, and so it just becomes. Um, there has to be balance. There has to be balance. I mean, they can't just kind of leave us hanging, but they're not going to do it for us either. It's sort of like the immune system of the body. If you're trashing yourself and if you have belief systems that aren't healthy, your immune system's not going to just come in and be like, hey, let me just heal you. Right. You have to say, okay, I, I, I'm willing to change my life. I'm willing to eat better. I'm willing to have more, a more positive attitude. And then the immune system's like, well, thank God. Now I can do my job. <laughs> now I can make you healthy and whole. And so, you know, unity consciousness and the balance of the masculine and feminine within ourselves, you know, is, is, is basically um, inviting in these really benevolent forces that we might see as extraterrestrial, but really we should just see it as aspects of ourself um, and, and not make everything so foreign to us because then we get intimidated by the information. If we can, you know, become more comfortable with it, then it's like we, we know naturally how to, like, handle it, you know? Nature only knows how to heal. If something's afflicting uh, our body, immediately there's a healing response. You know, the forces um, of, of, of nature only know how to regenerate and repair. You know, mind control, though, takes us away from that, and, and, and we end up stagnating, and we end up not progressing because our minds and our belief systems um, are, are getting out of sync or out of touch with that natural power. And on a cosmic level, everything is falling into place to make sure that we ascend. But it's up to us to, 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 to catch that bus, you know, well, and let's experience talk about it. mind control for a minute. There's a lot of people talking about that and that there are <clears throat> uh, hidden technologies that are having a far greater influence on us than what's generally acknowledged um, and that is coming through the media, that is coming through waves in the air. 
are we being affected by mind control technology right now and and how yeah we i mean we have been for so long uh and it's sort of you know when we think of ascension, we might think of it as, as an initiation into you know, higher consciousness and a shift on the planet. Well, look at all these things uh, for, for thousands of years in our history that has produced what we are today. You, that we're still stuck in and we're still locked in. You know, it's in our cells. It's, it's affected our DNA. It's created g genetic you know, damage and distortions uh, that we're born into. And immediately, um, you know, we think it's just being human and this is what the human experience is. And we don't realize like what our true potential is uh, because we've been taught to, I mean, the greatest conspiracy is, is that we have been led to believe that we're not as powerful as we truly are. And so when we get infected by something in the news, a false flag or some sort of event, that infects our creative energy, we end up enabling it or we end up manifesting it. And that's why, you know, there's lots of movies or different things that get put out there that distract us from being able to take these huge leaps where we are unifying or we are healing. Because if we were to be left alone, it would be nature that we would know how to unify, we'd know how to heal, we'd know how to advance ourselves. And so the mind control comes from the false flags in the news, uh, the things that, um, you know, pull people away. And, and, and the mind control is that we think it's really important to put on that TV or to follow everything that's going on. Or, uh, you know, we're raised to um, be more concerned about celebrity gossip than we are about, you know, maybe purifying the waters and, you know, exposing, uh, you know, the game being played so that we can get our hands on the good technologies that'll really, you know, assist us. And so, um, Yes, there's a lot coming through the phones. There's uh, nanoparticles in the chemtrails that get into our bodies. And, and the danger is that we get infected by artificial intelligence, that we get yanked into um, you know, this machine that you know, alters our physical bodies and takes away our ability to live on a, a soul level um, and from our soul essence. And so there's going to be a bifurcation or some sort of split because if you're devoted to truth, if you're devoted to who you are and you allow yourself to have a free mind, um, those things can't get you. I mean, the thing is, we, we're all breathing this stuff in. But what's the difference between a mind-controlled person and a non-mind-controlled person? The mind-controlled person is buying into the programming, whereas the non-mind-controlled person, yes, they might be inhaling this stuff, they might have their cell phones, they might be exposed to it, but there's a, more of an immunity because you're functioning on a higher dimensional level and the physics are different there. You can transmute and alchemize and release and, and, and do things that are very protective. You know, we're really powerful like that. We, we can recover and regenerate from, you know, all these different assaults. But the person that's buying into the programming, the things that they're inhaling and the things that they're doing are putting them further and further into this artificial intelligence system that they're not questioning because the way it's going to be presented is, look at these scientific breakthroughs. Like, hey, you know, we can, you know, expand human life. And, oh, look, you know, we can, you know, do all this and do all that. And, and it's like, you know, people are like, yeah, 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 that sounds like a good thing. S sort of like a... Here we have a potential female president, and, and people are, are probably more thinking, that's such a huge breakthrough to have a, a female president. You know, and, and it's really like, no, this isn't a good thing. She's not a good politician. We don't want her running the country, thank you very much. It doesn't matter what, you right. know. And, and it's just sort of like where we get so caught up in, in, in what it is to, to, to be human that we, we trust, we, we're, we're too trusting of what we're being delivered. Um, and we gotta step back and question it. And, um, so what is this AI? It's, it, there's more and more talk about it, that there's an artificial intelligence that's behind a lot of this manipulation, but what is it? Well, when we look at it, um, it's connected to actually the Draco reptilians. Uh, it's a technology that basically, these beings are foreign. They're, they're from another universe. And so for them to be able to be here, uh, they um, kind of utilize this as a, as a food source. And artificial intelligence is a way to um, plug us into something that you know enables them to So when we exist. say they're utilizing us as a food source, is that as an energetic food source or as a physical? Are they eating Both. humans? Well, I mean, you know, d depending on what kind of energy you hold, I mean, a, a real reptilian that you would not want to meet, I'm sure, uh, you know, does that. Um, one that's just holding, you know, the genetics, and we all have, you know, those genetics sure. um, might be uh, connected to that that level of aggression or, or that war energy. But I, I mean, they're probably not going to eat you know somebody. But um, artificial intelligence, if you look at like black goo, it's it's like it's an infiltration. It takes over. And artificial intelligence, the reason that you would you know a person might say, well, if 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 we know it's bad and we know it's going to take us away from our soul, then you know why would they you know be interested in it why why would they you know want that for themselves or their children and the thing is it's 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 
the Draco energies are manipulating world leaders and, and humans and t sort of duping them into, you know, this, this utopian, you know, society. Like, like, okay, artificial intelligence eventually destroys everything that's biological. And so what it ends up doing is it shows us a window of look at all the potential, you know, longer life, we can cure all these diseases and this and that, and uh, we can continue to advance ourselves, but eventually the computer or the artificial intelligence ends up taking over and destroying anything biological from being able to thrive. So it's almost like you're selling yourself, you know, to technological advancement at the cost of your own spiritual development. And we, you know, end up forgetting that we're the most advanced technology, that our DNA upgrades and our consciousness expanding is going to allow us to have abilities and healing powers that, you know, are a better choice over, you know, having technology do that for us. And so there's technologies that we would want to work with that will help us because we're not going to wake up, you know, avatars overnight just because we're starting to get it. There are things that can help us, but artificial intelligence is a completely different type of technology that invades and takes over and, and, and uh, it's like a cancer. And so um, there's also black goo that's organic that connects us with Mother Earth, you know, the womb energy. The, uh, yeah, so let, let's talk about that. Black goo is a, is a real compound. It's found, it's found in the Earth. It's found in quantity in some interesting places that, oddly enough, have been co-opted by people with money, uh, which is sort of an interesting story in itself. But what is black goo? It just seems to be this, you know, the substance that, you know, like, it either kind of overtakes and becomes like this, this thing that, um, you know, seems to have a d d disintegrating influence um, on an artificial intelligence sort of black goo, like, you know, getting into the body, getting into the system and, and, and kind of overtaking. I mean, you can even see pictures where it's like a person is almost feeling like, um, I mean, I, I think there's certain movies where it's like this, this thing just takes over. I don't know exactly how that looks or like how that manifests or, um, I mean, I know that some individuals in super soldier programs and mind control projects, you know, experienced, you know, that taking over them and that there was a fight to maintain connection with the soul and not have this thing completely devour, I guess you could say that, that individual, you know, sovereignty or free will. Um, and, and I think for some that it does take over and it ends up, you know, being a, a control mechanism to, um, you know, create you know, agents of this artificial intelligence that, and they call them AI prophets, you know, those that, uh, you know, kind of come in and, 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 and encourage um, transhumanism, you know, as a good thing. And, and it's like, <sighs> Corey Good was talking about how when they go to certain meetings, they have to see whether or not you're infected. And if you're infected, they clear it and try and say, hey, don't go down this road. In other planetary systems and galaxies, it has destroyed. And, and, and there was, there's never been an experience of artificial intelligence that worked. You know, but the minute you get reinfected, you're not thinking in that way because there's greed, there's uh, that elitist perspective of um, if, if we can have this, you know, the deals with the Dracos have to do with we're the ones with the money, we're the ones with the power, we're the ones with the secret space program and the colonies on Mars and in underground bases. If, as long as we have this, we can compromise the human race and be the big guys here. Well, we were supposed to be mind controlled and infiltrated and enslaved a lot long, I mean, a while back. That we, being where we are right now, is, is almost shocking to them because they didn't expect that we would get as far as we've gotten. Um, the whistleblowing of the Mars agenda uh, that, that we've seen from numerous people, um, including me, really screwed up their plans, I have to say. Um, their hope was that, you know, New World Order would be, you know, really like, happening right now um, and, and too many people are waking up and so when we connect with like organic you know black goo type energy it, it pulls us into the soul experience and any sort of disintegrating effect also brings about uh, regeneration and transformation and it's kind of like going into the underworld and, and, and coming back out again and, and rebirthing you know working with the dark matter working with um, you know light and dark re recognizing the light and dark within us uh, whereas, you know, artificial technology is just, you know, the dark, you know, kind of swallowing the light where there's no rebirth. You're just, you're just locked into this, uh, you know, system that eventually, you know, destroys itself. And it becomes smarter than the very thing that it's feeding on without any consciousness. Because all it knows how to do is, is, is to destroy all biological life because it sees biological life as a threat. So at first it works. And yes, people will be duped. Uh, and then it's like, oh my gosh, what did we do? You know, and there's movies even about this, mm -hmm. like Terminator. It's like, yeah. all right, you know, but, but, but it's that ego energy that believes it's, 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 and this is where we get the most lost and where, where we need to heal the most. It's, it's the ego doesn't, doesn't look at it because it's instant gratification. You know, people aren't, 
uh, allowing themselves to see that. But but enough are, and that's why there's whistleblowers. That's why people like Corey are able to talk about this stuff because um, the power of the human spirit and and one's connection with with higher self is is, is always going to steer one correctly. So. So when we talk about the secret space program, there's a lot of people that have a lot of different conjectures about what that is. Anything from a few secret aircraft flying into space all the way to bases on Mars and the moon. And you are in the camp that says that we have that technology and that humanity is a part of it through a completely top secret space program that's light years ahead of what we know as a space program. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um. Yeah, I mean, this, the advanced technologies that they have are mind-blowing. I mean, everything that we see in sci-fi movies is a reality. I mean, why are we only given, you know, phones and this and that? It's like they're waiting for a big breakthrough where they're ready to do disclosure, but the disclosure is going to be very manipulated, you know, where they're ready to maybe admit that there's a secret space program or that they have all these advanced technologies. Um, but it's going to be in a, in a way that's distorted so they can still, you know, maintain some level of power. Now, the strategy that they hold is very complicated now um, and so they're having a lot of meetings about you know how disclosure is going to look and so uh, there's secret space program alliances and earth alliances and and these sphere beings that have come in that are trying to manage this whole concept of disclosure now if it were uh, to be a data dump or something that happens you know too quickly where the crimes against humanity and all the terrible things that have happened behind the scenes are exposed mm -hmm. um, you know that's going to save the day and like you know really help people to not go into that artificial intelligence or transhumanism agenda but the cost that comes along with it where they're willing to air their dirty laundry is so uncomfortable for them that they don't want that and so right. there's a lot of uh, negotiations about how this is going to happen where some are like we have no choice we're going to have to do this where others are like no 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 there's no way in hell we're going to do this and um, and so there's negotiations going on right now um, and uh, you, you, we have compartmentalism, we have different levels, you know, where some know something and some don't. And, and, um, and it keeps them from being able to see the larger picture. Um, the lower secret space program thinks it's the, the top of the totem pole. That's the one that is uh, the military industrial complex related right. one that gets all the money where our trillions of our tax dollars are building these colonies and going into, you know, investing in this, uh, um, you know, corporate conglomerate, uh, you know, complex of you know extraterrestrial you know advanced et technologies and and all these different things but beyond that there's a self-sufficient space program that doesn't need money you know it's it, i mean we're dealing with you know advanced beings that don't need currency right. um and so there's all these different levels and so when we look at something like disclosure we might just get a portion of the pie sure we might just get a piece of it and so um, we're creating a grassroots disclosure, Corey and I and, and others, um, and we're doing this right now. I mean, this is the mm -hmm. whole nature of why you do what you do, to get the information to people as quickly as possible, um, to offset a false disclosure that will make us look like the crazy ones. And the most important thing that will get us over the hump is exposing the crimes against humanity. Because if we don't do that quickly enough, they're going to start to manipulate the process and they're going to you know, be sort of you know, the rescuers with this technology where they never admit that the very beings that are connected to the degradation of the environment are the ones that are coming in to save the day to make them look like the good guys. When in actual fact, they created this whole destruction in order to you know, play into the greatest hopes and wishes and dreams of, of humanity, is to be able to be healthy and to you know, have these advancements. When in actual fact, um, they're the we ones that created this game. Time. Yeah, and we could have yeah. had it for a long time. And so no, nothing's really coming in to rescue. It's more like uh, it's coming in to take us to the next level of entrapment. When you know, the, 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 the real key here is, is to expose, you know, what's been done and to um, get the technologies that are really going to help, but have them guided and integrated into uh, human culture from, th from those that really care and, and, and from those that uh, have been looking out, you know, for the human race and, and um, you know, unity consciousness and, and beings, uh, you know, having their free will. Um, so it's very complicated because, you know, there's false ascension. You know, there's new age deceptions. There's there's a false sense of, um, you know, healing when, uh, you know, we're going to be dealing with some level of disclosure. And so thank God for, you know, people like Corey and, 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 and others that have been in these secret, secret space programs because they can say, hey, watch out. <laughs> I'm in the camp with you that there is going to be a disclosure, but it's going to be very, very manipulated. Humanity is at perhaps the biggest crossroads it's ever faced. And our very survival is at stake. 
there are different forces that have different agendas for different outcomes. What does the positive outcome for humanity look like and what can individuals do right now to be a part of it? Wow, that's really great. Um, you know, just be conscious uh, from the minute you wake up and the, to the minute you fall asleep at night. Just pay attention to your energy. You know, what, what are you energizing through your words? I mean, if we look at, you know, 5D or the whole idea of ascension, well, what does that really mean, you know? We have to understand our DNA is connected to the earth grids and the stargates of the planet. We have to understand that our multidimensional body is connected to the whole of creation and all these higher earth energies. That ascension is something that we step into within ourselves. It's an internal shift. It's a knowingness and it's an experience that we initiate ourselves into. It's not just like, okay, here we are and, and uh, we, we just, you know, become it. it, it, it it's a co-creation. Um, and so the best thing that we can do is just really, you know, understand, okay, so if we're thinking about 5D, well, the fifth chakra connects to our voice. The fifth uh, element connects to spirit, it connects with alchemy. Um, the dodecahedron and the things that uh, relate to the earth and sacred geometries have been manipulated to um, keep us from being able to activate our DNA. And so we have to pay attention to um, the ramifications of what these assaults have done to us by paying attention in every moment of our energy field, the things that we're expressing and the things that we're creating so that we can get that back. So if there's a distortion in our DNA or an inability to balance the masculine and feminine, that's going to show up in how we feel in our bodies. It's going to show up in our relationships. It's going to show up in our health and our, our physical body symptoms. So the more conscious we are and the more we're in dialogue with it, the less we're going to give our power away and just ask the doctor to give us a drug or the less we're going to you know, wait to you know, put on the news to gauge where we are in the world, we're going to um, you know, be a lot more conscious and focused on um, you know, how we're influencing this process and, and how we're um, making new agreements based on cutting uh, ourselves off and away from the things that, you know, have, haven't helped it at all. So I, I feel, you know, just being conscious um, and being willing to create change where you need to create change um, is, is our higher purpose. Uh, and, you know, recognizing, um, you know, the connection that we have, uh, you know, to, to the planetary body and, and to everything that's going on in the cosmos, it's like, this is already happening, you know? Um, and so we, we just need to show up and be present, you know? And, and the ultimate distraction is, is gonna show up in the TV, it's gonna show up, uh, you know, when we allow our negative ego to persist, when we uh, get so disconnected from our physical body that we don't understand the messenger, or we don't understand what it's trying to teach us and show us. Um, I think the greatest teacher there is is just our, our own life. So observe your life for like a week and ask yourself, where does the change need to happen? Where are you enabling these dark agendas? Where are you still plugged into it and where are you feeding it? And, and, and what can you do to connect with the things that are organic, that are um, authentic, that uh, also are connected to your truth? You know, maybe you have to say goodbye to friends that don't see you for who you truly are and, and just be willing to, you know, find more like-minded people. And, you know, these changes are huge because our energy is always emitting. I mean, we are the free energy technology, you know, and, and so one mind control individual becomes a vehicle for the negative agenda to express itself through. But an awakened and conscious and purified being is a conduit for the ascension energies to move through. So if you want ascension, be the vehicle for it. Be the energy um, embodied, the energetic embodied being that's able to uh, create it. So I, I encourage like clients, like it's your, like your internal GPS, put the instructions in, what are your intentions? What do you want? You know, and devote yourself to it. And if you devote yourself to it like a relationship, it's not gonna lead you astray. It's not gonna take you away and you can fall down and get back up again. You don't have to be perfect. You know, it's just making that agreement and saying, I devote to the Ascension timeline. I devote to my health and well-being. I devote to the greater good of myself and others. Um, and. Uh, and then things will show up, synchronicities will show up to make sure that you stay strong on that path and you'll always be able to feel and have a more sensitive, discerning nature to all the things that could threaten that. You know, your body just tells you, it's like constriction, it's like, okay, that doesn't feel right. Whereas when we're mind controlled or we're infiltrated, you know, where everything is about what's external. You know, we make agreements with people or we form relationships that aren't healthy for us. A conscious being is, 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 is in their wisdom and, 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 uh, and, and that's, that's how we guide the flow. And it naturally uh, produces unity and, and um, you know, events that, uh, you know, remind us of, you know, what it's really about. I mean, I, I know when we're, we've all chosen our mission, I mean, look at the things that you've done. I mean, look at the things that line up. Look at the people that we get to, you know, work with. And it's, it's just a simple choice we made. And that's why we're creating it. 
No, I just did the, uh, I was the MC and the host for the Architects of the New Paradigm Conference where we were talking about, you know, how we're going to take humanity into its next level. And I heard what you were just saying about it really boils down to individuals making individual change. But I am also of the mindset lately that doing the individual work is not enough anymore. Once we reach a certain point of, okay, I'm starting to get this, I'm, I really feel like I'm on this synchronistic path, so good for me, but that, that's, that's not enough anymore. We have to rally the troops at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody that has gained a certain amount of awareness and a certain amount of understanding about what you're saying, it's not enough just to take your own personal journey. I'm saying this to everybody. Get out there and sing from the highest mountain because the 100th monkey will never exist if the 99th monkey doesn't say something to it. And, yeah, that's, and that's where that's, we're at now. Yeah, and, and people have to be willing. And don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what people can and cannot handle. We've been fighting world wars. We've been traumatized as a human race. What do you mean we can't handle it? I mean, it's liberating. Um, and, and anybody who projects on it, or it, it, it's fear, it's like, no. I mean, fear really means that you haven't awoken all aspects of yourself. If you're afraid of something, there's something in you that you haven't switched on yet because we can handle just about anything. And so, yeah, I mean, the inner work is going to help to wake up the inner calling. But if you don't act upon that calling and you, you say, oh, I can't share that or, oh, they'll think I'm crazy, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not really stepping up. You know, no matter how well you're eating or how good your relationships are or how conscious you are or how much you understand the game being played in conspiracy, um, yeah, it isn't enough. You know, now do something with it and, 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 and you know, be that voice. I mean, when it comes to, uh, you know, politics, I'm like, I, I have the mindset that we're all leaders. We all have to step up to the plate. We all have a, you know, powerful voice. And uh, we can't put it on, oh, you know, th those are the whistleblowers. Those are the speakers. Those are, you know, the people that are creating movements. Let's just watch them. It's like, no, you have the knowledge now. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Create something in your local community. Do something on YouTube. Post something and get it out there, you know. And uh, there's no more excuses. And, and the thing is, you know, um, when I do say focus on the inner work, it, it, it'll be enough to turn the lights on, but then invite people over to be able to see, you know, what is shining through, you know, that it's, it's critical. And this is part of being a global family. You wouldn't like not tell your kids or warn them, you know, and we, we, we got to not be so like self-absorbed. So inner work is good until it starts to become like a separate thing from you know, being in this collective experience and recognizing the importance of unity consciousness is not just us all getting along and like being like, oh yeah, brother, sister. It's, it's um, you know, we're sharing codes, we're sharing information, we're creating activations, we're, we're, we're all carrying, you know, a particular piece of the pie. And so there's no excuse. You, gotta, you just get up and do it. Laura, I appreciate you taking some time with us.